So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our Q&A video, as in KRS Satsang. And, of course, as promised, I took the questions from my last KRN Satsang that I did last week, and we're going to be answering them here today. And, uh, as always, if uh, you don't know what your planetary placements are, uh, along with all my astrological books and consultations, check out the links here under shop section. And today, finally, I'm going to be filming the last lesson of my Nakshatra course, Revati, today. So after tonight, you will find all the lessons on my Magavedic Astrology Academy. So anyway, uh, let's not waste time and let's start with this particular video. This I need for white balance. Okay, so the first question comes from Limsa. Oh no, Oop. man, I can't even read. Upa up, usamsa. Okay, if Saturn is in Tula, meaning Libra then it's third aspect always bad okay that's a very good question so if as you know in vedic astrology saturn has third seventh and tenth aspect in your birth chart from where it sits so if saturn is exalted in where it feels the highest will its third aspect be bad and my answer is yes and my answer is also no. How is it that I am contradicting the statement? It's quite simple. Saturn, third aspect, is always going to be karmic. Wherever Saturn's third aspect is, one will have to pay karma related to that house. But when it's exalted, that means if, if a light of the planet is really bright, you know, really like in its purest form, and then it aspects the third house, how is it changing that? So on first aspect, yes, it will give you that uh, karma to deal with, whichever house it is. But because it's exalted, it also gives the person to put their self efforts into improving the karma. Now, if Saturn, let's say, was not in its own sign, like, you know, Capricorn or Aquarius or like Libra, but let's say Saturn was just in a neutral sign, then definitely the effect of the third house karma is not only there, but the ability to kind of repent that becomes tough. But regardless of the sign placement of any planet, when they have their, all, their aspect, certain aspect, when they are meant to be tough, they're going to be tough. So even let's say if Saturn Dasha is operating and Saturn is exalted. And you might be thinking, well, Saturn is a yoga karka for my planet and it's exalted. It's going to give great results. It is going to give great results, but it's also going to give its own karka vastha, its own natural tattva which is a malefic planet, it is going to be a malefic. It is going to give the malefic results. Okay. Then the next question is from Good Day. In D9, Saturn, Sun, conjunction in Cancer in the 4th house. And Mars is in the 10th house in Capricorn. Okay. So you probably just want to know what is happening here. Uh, so first of all, this is, pro uh, this is probably, I'm guessing you are either like an engineer or technical person. And this is a specifically a type of conjunction that definitely causes a lot of lethargicness in a person. Uh, you know, like uh, people who kind of sometimes deal with chronic fatigue, it'll bring that uh, uh, type of an issue. At the same time, one will always deal with some issues with their joints and muscles. 
with this particular placement. And this is especially going to become active through marriage. But this is also the placement that will show duty, commitment, sacrifice on behalf of your household, the household after marriage. And because you are not going to want to fulfill those duty and commitment unless you have the rule of law, that's going to create fights in the home as well. So it doesn't matter if you're a man or woman. If you are going to, um, you know, demand things in marriage and want certain things to happen your way, before you can give your commitment and your duty and your sacrifice to that household, it is going to create major conflict with this particular position. And especially, usually I also find that a person has a internal issues, psychological issues related to lack of nourishment through the mother. Then uh, it's Prem Bansali. If the name of a person is not kept with Moon Rashi, should the person change their name? Uh, no. Just because your Moon Nakshatra is a particular nakshatra and those nakshatra have certain sounds you don't you don't really need to rename it after that what you need to do actually especially when in your particular birth chart a planet becomes a yoga karaka okay so if for example for a cancer ascendant mars will become a yoga karaka or for taurus ascendant you know, Saturn becomes a yoga karka. You want to take that particular planet and its sounds and put that as the name. But of course, we want to see, okay, so where is the nakshatra lord of that planet placed? How, what does that nakshatra mean? You know, so all of these things are going to have to be looked at in order for that name to really come about. Uh, but in terms of just the moon, that's not necessarily always the case. Then, next question is from Carolina Saki Sunny Kati. I know I'm not pronouncing this correctly. What if the person has many Dhan Yogas in their birth chart, but then has Dhan Yoga in Navamsha? So since, oh, and has no Dhan Yogas in Navamsha. So since you said Dhan Yoga shows the potential to earn money, if they, if they present in the nat if they're present in the natal chart, but not in Navamsha, does the potential to earn money goes away in the second part of life. No, what this simply means is this, the Dhan Yoga becomes The Dhan Yoga becomes weak. So let's say you have a Dhan Yoga in your birth chart. And if that planet is at least strong, even regardless of the placement, but it's strong by its sign placement, by its conjunction, then the Dhan Yoga gives results, good results. But if the planet that is causing a Dhan Yoga is in Navamsha in a good placement, good conjunction, but on top of that, it's again causing a Dhan Yoga in that chart. That is a magnificent Dhan Yoga. Okay. Um, then the next question is from Infinity 4. Okay, actually, a question, is it related to your next video? Does moon in the 8th house for Scorpio Ascendant causes early death? I will be very much happy if you can answer this. So here's the thing. If we decided the longevity of a person on one planet and one house, then I don't think people would be living for much long. 
you know, if we decided uh, or if there was such a rule in astrology that, oh, this planet in the eighth house is debilitated, so now you got to die early. Sorry. No, that's not how it works. You got to look at, you know, your eighth house, eighth lord. You have to look at the Sarvashtak Varga. Then you have to look at the Navamsha. Then there is this one other chart you have to look at, especially the Dwada Samsa. There's a, and then you has, and it's not even that. Let's say you even know the combinations. You have to look at a particular dasha, especially Shula dasha, for all these things. You know, but I don't want to get into it because I don't want to just discuss it like that. I mean, if I'm going to ever discuss this particular part, it's going to take a long while because I want to make sure you don't just, you know, misjudge something and make your own interpretation on something without knowing too much. But no, this planet does not, just this one placement will not cause any kind of like early death or anything. I mean, um, I think Michael Jordan has moon in the 8,000 Scorpio. So, you know, then the next one is from Rahul Mehta. Can you talk about the combination and condition for a career in sports? I've heard that sixth lord in the 10th house is a very important and almost required um, condition for huge success. So again, just like this one placement thing that you're talking about, that's not how it works. First of all, for sports, third house is seen. Sixth house is simply competition. So if you're sixth house, six lords in the 10th house, it just simply means that one will have to deal with a lot of competition in their work. One will have to deal with a lot of enemies in their work. And what is the job of a sportsman? They have to go out and they have to compete with their opponents. That's their enemy. But third house is the house of sports. And especially when Atma Karka and Bhatri Karka, meaning planet with the highest degree, and planet with the third highest degree are conjunct or an aspect, especially through Gemini or even like a regular conjunction, that creates a combination. And then you have to also look at, does a person, hey, what up, dude? Does a person have interest in uh, sports? Uh, because a lot of times you'll even find this combination and may make a person an actor, not a sports person. And especially Mars and Venus have to be seen for that involvement. Okay. We're done with our coughing. So she has, one of our dogs has a kennel cough. Um, so there's a many combination. But yeah, I mean, Sixth Lord in the 10th house is an excellent position because a person, uh, you know, will be extremely competitive. They cannot work unless they have competition, unless they have enemies. Okay. And then we have Sabhi 5. I would have a question. How can I read into my own birth chart about my parents and their biggest events in life? Oh, very good question. So how can you read, you know, events of your parents or siblings? One easiest way is this. Like for mother, make the fourth house the ascendant and start reading the chart from there. And use your own dasha, Vimshotri dasha, to relate the events. For father, ninth house, make ninth house the ascendant. And if you want to go into much more detail, go and look at the Dwada Samsa chart. Okay? In Dwada Samsa chart, make the fourth house the ascendant and read the chart. And for father's life, Look at the ninth house as make the ninth house as the ascendant and read the chart. And the other thing you also want to see is the Devata. Like there's Ganesha, there's this one Rishi, and then there's Yama. You want to see by the degrees of sun and moon in the birth chart what you know Rishi there but, uh, you know representing, and that will also give you a great clue about your father, mother. For siblings. You want to look at the Drikna, the D3 chart. So these are some of the simple ways. And just like I said, just use Vimshotri Dasha. So if let's say Saturn is in the sixth house 
from let's say Saturn is in the ninth house. Saturn period is operating. Well, from the fourth house, Saturn is in the sixth house, meaning mother may deal with some chronic health issue or some joint issues, pain in the teeth. So this is how you can read events. Okay. So guys, this is my um, Q and A for um, this week. But also, let's quickly talk about the 2020 horoscope as well. And I also wanted to quickly touch upon the 2020 horoscope that thousands and thousands of you are requesting, uh, which is especially concerning the eclipse that is going to happen on the 21st. And I just wanted to keep it short and sweet. And one thing I'm going to tell you is that the 60s are back. Whatever happened in the 60s, it is going to play out starting from this particular uh, eclipse between now and the next two years. And I would probably say before September you will see, before September 20th you will see these things initiating, starting that initiation process. And my advice here would be, and it's not even due to this, you should always be a prepper. Always be a prepper. Look at the term pep prepper. It's a person who always have things in their life. So when something goes wrong out in the world, they have the ability to sustain themselves for a while. And this is regardless of, you know, what, you know, what events may take place or not take place. But it's always better to, um, you know, be a prepper and be prepared for any kind of an event in life. And of course, many of you are, you know, may not be in that position, but still, you don't have to be an expert prepper. You can just do small things in life. You can do small things in life to always be prepared. Okay. So that's all I wanted to add to that. Rest. Let's just have it unfold. Okay. Just like the protest thing video that I made last month. Let's just let it unfold. But uh, yeah, that's all I wanted to say. And if you're new to my channel, subscribe below so you don't miss these type of videos. And if you want to know any astrological information, check out this website under shop section. Otherwise, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.